Hello and welcome uh, back to this video, or in this video we're going to talk about the absolutive case. Uh, so if you've gone and seen the video on transitive and intransitive verbs, this will be helpful here. Um, the absolutive case can be the subject of an intransitive verb or the object of a transitive verb. In sort of Western languages, we're not used to seeing these as kind of a group, so this can be a little bit uh, weird if you're coming from a, a uh, an English perspective or a, or a Latin-based language perspective that we might group, for example, the subject of an intransitive verb with the object of a transitive verb. Uh, but that's what the absolutive case is, and there are lots of languages that use the absolutive case. And so in, in those languages, this phrase, this noun phrase here and this noun phrase here, uh, would be marked the same way. So if this were a pronoun, a he saw, it wouldn't be I, it would be me in English. Me is marked differently than I. You can tell they have different forms, me and I. But there are languages in which it would say I here, if, if that were the object. Um, he saw I and I ran yesterday. Uh, because these two are in uh, are both in the semantic or are both in the grammatical position of an absolutive case. Um, so, uh, really quickly, some people see the sort of logic of the absolutive case that uh, both of these positions here. I saw a girl and I ran yesterday. Um, as being somehow maybe a little bit less active. Because if you're running, uh, you might be, you're, you're not acting on anything else. Um, and if you saw a girl, the girl isn't acting on anything else. So it's sort of uh, being in the position of not being active on another object. So that kind of links the two. But either way, it's the subject of an intransitive verb or the object of a transitive verb. 